Hello, my taste buds. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. And even if you don't know a carpus from a Beitzach, join me today for the celebration of Passover. And just like any holiday observance, I'm doing it with food. Today on Simpler Taste. and welcome to Soflo Taste here in the Goya Kitchen at JA World in Coconut Creek. Passover is the major Jewish spring festival which commemorates the liberation of the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. So today I thought it would be appropriate to give you some of my favorite Passover recipes. And if truth be told, you may want to enjoy them at other times of the year too. So let's get cooking. Who doesn't love matzo ball soup, right? I mean, it's so good. And then there's two camps. There's the matzo balls that float and the matzo balls that sink. I am a floater, not a sinker. And so I'm gonna teach you how to make a nice, light, fluffy one. I'm gonna add a little bit of kosher salt to matzo meal. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of baking powder. There is kosher baking powder that can be used on Passover, so you can use that. This is regular baking powder. Let's add some eggs to this mixture, as well as a little bit of schmaltz, my secret weapon. Schmaltz is chicken fat. So I just went ahead and took the skin off a couple of chicken thighs and rendered them down. And I have chicken fat. I mean, honestly, there's nothing better. You can use a little bit of either vegetable shortening or vegetable oil to replace it. Let's mix that together. And you really want to make sure you get every little bit of this scraped and combined. And then finally, to finish, about a quarter cup of salsa. Yeah, that's about a quarter cup. All right. Let's pour that in there. And that helps lift with all those good bubbles. I already have some good chicken stock about to come to a boil. Now, a lot of people poach their matzo balls or cook them in water and then put them in soup. I never really understood that because to be honest with you, matzo balls soak up everything you put them in. So why not put them in really good soup? So we have chicken stock which I make. If you want to go back to my recipe of chicken stock, of course, all of my recipes are always found on the SoFlo Home webpage. But to be honest, like really transparent with you, I love the taste of a little bit of bouillon. So if you want to add a little bit of bouillon or chicken broth, as they call it, to your chicken soup, you can do that and it'll give it even more flavor. All right, so my chicken soup came to a boil I'm going to bring it down because you don't want to boil your matzo balls. You want to simmer them. So my dough has just about come together. You really want to let that sit for just a couple minutes. And I've got dill and carrots. Nobody ever eats the pulled chicken. If you want to put it in there, great. And that's really it. I just wanted to show you what a beautiful Seder plate we've made. And of course, we have um, a little salt water for the dipping of either the bitter herbs for the tears and the bitterness in life. And your matzah, we've got the lamb shank that's been roasted for the sacrifice. We've got the egg for the springtime in life. We've got the haroset, which is the sweet apple with wine and a little bit of honey and raisins. We've got the horseradish. And we have, this, can, this is a celebration of spring, so it can either be uh, lettuce or celery. And I think I already mentioned the parsley. So, pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and start making these matzo balls, forming them. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on my hands. And like I said, I like my matzo balls small. Now they always expand in the broth. So I'm just going to make them about yay big and then plop it into the broth. The longer it sits, obviously, uh, the stiffer it gets and it becomes easier to handle. But I don't really have a problem with this. And you'll see them come to the top. They rise to the top. And then once they're all in, we're going to cover it and we're going to let them cook. Now, I don't like my carrots to be too mushy. 
So I'm gonna put my carrots in when my matzo balls have pretty much finished cooking. So come right back, and by that time, I hope my matzo balls will be in there and beautifully cooked. I'll see you in a few minutes. Chef Michelle has more from the Goya Kitchen at JA World. Soplo Taste is back in two. Welcome back to Soplo Taste and our Passover show. I am searing some brisket, but before I jump into that, let me just show you the matzo balls have been cooking for about eight to 10 minutes, so they're beautifully fluffy. I'm gonna add, and by the way, I cover them and lower it so that they steam and, and, and simmer in there, and they're beautifully cooked. So I'm gonna now add some sliced up carrots and some dill, and I'll let that go for a little bit longer, and then we'll take a look at it together. All right, so brisket. I believe in the second cut of brisket, you can use the first cut as well. You just wanna make sure that you're getting something, you know, it's all about the quality of the meat. So my friends at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market are taking your Passover and Easter orders right now. And they're located in Hollywood at 4191 North State Road 7. Go to DelawareChicken.com or you can always call them at 954-983-6831. Place an order with them. Make sure you tell them Chef Michelle sent you and that I adore them and thank you for the brisket because it's fabulous. All right, so it has a big, thick fat cap and I'm searing and rendering that fat cap right now. I put a little bit of vegetable oil in there and it's been searing and it'll probably be nice and golden. I'm just gonna turn it over and flip it for a sec. It's very heavy, so if you don't have a strong arm, you'll need to ask somebody at home for one. So when I cooked mine, I actually cooked mine in my roasting pan, this one to be exact, and I prefer using a roasting pan. And so if you have one, now is the time to use it. And if you have a stainless steel one, you can actually put it on a burner or two and you can sear your brisket right in a stainless steel roasting pan. If you don't, then go ahead and do what I'm doing and then you could put the, the brisket into your roasting pan that happens to not be stainless. Once you've seared your brisket, go ahead and take it out of the pan. And I'm just gonna show you as if this was my roasting pan, okay? We are going to throw half of the onions, and it's a lot of them, underneath the brisket. Carrots celery. I'm going a little bit tomato-y this time. We've got some chopped tomatoes from canned tomatoes with their juice. A little bit of ketchup, not too much. I use just a few, a couple tablespoons at the most. A lot of people put, in my opinion, a little too much ketchup, making it a little bit sweet. So I just add a little bit in there. I've got a little bit of brown sugar because I found that I was adding the acid of the tomatoes and some chilies, and this really balanced it out. I already heavily seasoned the brisket with salt and pepper, just so you know. So this is something new for me. I, I keep a lot of Calabrian chilies in the house, and Calabrian chilies come in a jar from Calabria, Italy. They're wonderful, and I added a little bit to my brisket, and something kind of magical happened. It was really amazing. So I highly recommend it. You can also use your favorite chili sauces. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of bay leaves and some whole thyme around. And then finally, I've got some garlic cloves, which I'm just gonna kinda smash with the heel of the knife. And I'm gonna throw those in there. And then for liquids, I'm using some nice uh, dry, not fruity, red wine and just a little bit of beef broth, just for safety, to make sure I have a lot of gravy because I love the gravy. Finally, you put your brisket back on top. Cover it with the rest of the onions, which are a lot. Remember, we're pretending that this is our rack, right? Our, our roasting pan. 
And then what I do is I cover this with aluminum foil and I go into the oven and I go in a really low oven, painstakingly. So, so I do 325 degrees and I let this go for four to five hours and then I finally let it uncover and this is what it looked like. So I wanted to show you my finished brisket and I wanted to show you like this for a reason. This is cold. So this is cooked cold out of my fridge. So after I cook a brisket, I leave it out till it gets to room temperature and I throw it in the refrigerator. What happens is I have all of this and I know it's not the prettiest but I wanted you to see it to learn something. I have all of this coagulated fat all the way around it. So what I do is that, that cold temperature allows me to get rid of the coagulated fat that gathers on the top of the gravy. Now you might not want to take it all out, but I definitely like taking at least about 90% of it out because I really don't want my gravy to be that fatty. Brisket has enough fat in it on its own that we don't need all of this. Then I take my brisket and I take all of the good onions that have cooked on the top of it and scrape them off. I put the brisket on my cutting board and this is what mama used to do and this is why her brisket was always beautifully juicy, never ever ever dry. I mean that woman never made a dry brisket, it was always perfect. Take a slicing knife or you can even take an electric knife and go ahead and as thin as you can, look how soft this is, just slice your brisket into very thin slices. When you're done slicing, put it back into this gravy, cover it up and put it on a low oven right before your guests arrive and you won't believe how deliciously juicy and tender your brisket's gonna be. So come right back, I'll have slice all this out and put that in there. I'm gonna heat it up for you and then we'll serve up that matzo ball soup and then I have a beautiful dessert recipe. It's actually the first time I ever make it and it came out glorious. So all of my recipes are always available on the Zofla Show's webpage. And by pointing your phone's camera at this quick response code, you'll go right to it. Easy, huh? Chef the Shell will be right back. Stay tuned for SoFlo Home Project and me, Elena Capra, next. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. As we always are, we're here at J World in Coconut Creek, a great place for our children. For more information on what's going on here, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. Now back to the food. Our matzo ball soup is out and beautiful. The carrots are just tender. Fresh dill goes on top. And I have to tell you, they are probably the softest, fluffiest matzo balls I have ever made. Let's jump into our cake. We have a beautiful saffron orange cake. It's really delightful and it's not made with any flour. What we did was we actually made our own almond flour with a bag of slivered almonds in the food processor. You can do it in a blender as well. I'm just gonna put a little bit of baking powder in the almond flour and mix that up. Again, you can buy kosher baking powder, so mix that up. Now I'm gonna go forward a little bit. We're gonna glaze the cake afterwards with a little bit of honey, orange, and saffron. I've got a little bit of honey in this pan. I'm just gonna squeeze an orange into it. And this is just gonna be a beautiful sheen and added flavor for the top of the cake. Here's a little bit of saffron. Just gonna add that to it. I'm gonna heat that up a little bit, let that warm through, and that'll be our glaze. So let's jump right into the cake mix. We've already got the baking powder and the almond flour together. Here I have some eggs, which I'll whisk up and add a little bit of vanilla extract and some regular granulated sugar. Okay. Let's add the almond meal or flour baking powder into the egg mixture and combine that together. And then now if you're using 
butter this year. You can melt some butter and add it to it, or of course a lot of people would rather use margarine if they're going to eat the meat or the brisket later, so I'm using butter. This is a little bit of saffron with the juice of these oranges right here, which I'm gonna tell you about in just a second. Just combine all that. All right, our last ingredient is something I have never done before and it gives it beautiful flavor. So these are two oranges that we covered with plastic wrap and threw into the microwave for almost five minutes. And what they do is it just makes them, as you can see, just beautifully soft. The oranges that we got have no large seeds in them. Uh, I cut this one open just to see. There's really no seeds at all, so I'm just gonna go straight into a food processor. If you see a lot of seeds, or large seeds, when you open it up, I just have a little, basically a, like a little baby remnant of a seed, and I'm fine with that. So the whole thing goes into a food processor. While you put the oranges through this, you're gonna have to open it up a couple times probably and just push everything down to make sure this really gets pureed really, 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 really well and soft. All right. Yummy, the oranges smell so good. So let me let you see that. It's not beautiful. Mm, delicious. All right, so let's go ahead and fold that right into the rest of the batter. And you would think that it would be terribly bitter, but it's not. It's just the most beautiful, really rounded orange flavor I've ever experienced. Now you really have to mix this well because that orange likes to clump up. And you really wanna make sure that it's all the way throughout the batter. All right, so we've got a spring form pan that has been lined up the sides and on the bottom with a little bit of parchment paper and sprayed really well. Let's go ahead and add our cake to it. All right, this doesn't take very long to bake at all. So don't go too far, come right back and let's see how it comes out. And then of course we have to glaze it and check out our brisket that's warming in the oven as well. We have a lot to do, so hurry back. Welcome back to Soflo Taste and Passover. So I wanted to show you how beautifully, so remember I sliced the cold brisket, put it back into its juices, warmed it very delicately on about 280, 300 degrees, covered of course in foil, and this is it. I mean, I just pulled it out with a spoon and it just, it's gorgeous. It's tender, it's juicy, and it's just so natural. All right, so to finish our beautiful cake that just came out of the oven, uh, you basically want to take a skewer and poke some holes all the way around because we want it to soak up as much of this saffron honey orange as possible. And then I'm just going to gently pour the somewhat still warm saffron orange honey around the cake. And allow it to just trickle down the sides. And then if you have some or wanna make some or wanna buy some, we brought along, we love dried citrus in our house and in our restaurants and so I have some beautiful dried grapefruit and blood oranges and reg regular oranges that make just a lovely presentation and they're crispy and they're really delicious. 
So if you can get your hands on some of these, I just think they're, they're just lovely. And there you have it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching me make, make some of my favorite Passover recipes. Now it's your turn. I hope that you try them and I hope that you love them. I know that all my holidays revolve around food and family. After all, I am a chef and I do have a family. But these are also good recipes to celebrate with your family absolutely anytime. Next week, I'm hopping down from the bunny trail as I keep the theme of spring celebrations with some of my absolutely favorite recipes for Easter. So make plans to join me for Easter dinner on the next SoFlo Taste. Now let's check in with the talented Elena Capra. Hey Elena, what are you doing today on SoFlo Home Project? Hi Michelle, good morning. So today we're talking about custom furniture. Whether you're looking to match an existing piece of furniture in your home with something new, or perhaps you have an awkward layout in a room and can't find anything to fit, coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we're gonna give you an inside look at what it takes to build those custom furniture pieces for your home. Thank you, we'll all be watching. So taste buds, and you are my taste buds, please be smart, be safe, and for goodness sakes, be vaccinated, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye, and very good taste. Happy Passover. Happy Pesach.